Greetings, Stamp Sleuths. Today I'm going to be doing a reveal of some uh, an estate sale find that I made this morning with my husband. We paid $40 for everything and you can't see everything yet because there's quite a lot here. Uh, this was from an estate in town and uh, it was the first stop we made at 8.30 and we were very pleased with our finds. Again, $40. And uh, I'll start with these little spoons here. They are really tiny. They are not sterling. I kind of looked at and the woman said to me that they were community. So they're kind of neat. I do collect little wee spoons like that, these demitasse, and it's a set of four. Tarnished, but beautiful. And then my husband and I also collect lighters. And this is a really nice little one in a crystal. And um, there's no damage to it whatsoever that I can see. And again, it was part of this $40 lot. Now this big hulking thing beside me here is a telephone. And what was really interesting about this telephone was this earpiece here. And it is signed. It says, I don't know, I'll move this so it doesn't make so much noise. It says H.R. Reniker, Reniker P.O. Box 9235, San Diego, uh, California, U.S. Patent Number 3.058. 6, pardon me, 0.862. So this was uh, put onto this telephone uh, for an ear rest. And it is signed underneath, but I can't read what it says. And I'm just going to move this over here and try and tip this up so you can get a better idea. I don't know if I can. Actually, I'm just going to turn my camera. There we go. This is the phone here. And it, as you can see, works. And it looks like it's been put on an old phone box. But we got this because we collect phones, and it was... The price was right. I'm going to move it. Because there's more yet to come. Now I collect old canning jars. And these two were sitting there. This is a crown. And it doesn't have anything else on it. But this is a Canadian jar. And what caught my attention was the lid. Now I don't know if this lid is um, one that was put on after the fact. Because it's more of an aqua color. When you see it up against the blue, you can see it's aqua. But what's interesting about this lid is it was patented December 17th and November 4th, uh, 62, it says 61, 1761, pardon, no, that can't be right. December 17th, 61, November 4th, 62, and December 6th, 64, and July 68. I believe those are 1860. Now I know this jar isn't that old, but oddly enough, whoever had this little insert, it fits perfectly onto this jar. This is an Atlas Easy Seal, and it's got the safety seal top on it. I do believe this came as is, it needs a bit of a bath, but again, two nice finds. The next item that was from that estate is this absolutely glorious little tin. I believe it's a cookie tin. It says Labuchin, Labuchin, uh, 300 grams. So I think this was for cookies. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it's like really beautiful. It's a, I don't know if it's paper. It, 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 I think it's actually tin that's got this color on it and it's got quite a nice look to it. A little dirty, but I, and I don't think I want to try cleaning this. I might give it a little wipe down. It's in good condition considering. It's not perfect inside, but again, I collect tins. So this is a nice find. Now the star finds I have off to the side here and they're very fragile and I will do my best because there is reflection. I will move this back here. Give everything a move. Now this is what um, I've heard called either uh, panoramic or foot long or yard long photos. And what's interesting about this one is that it's from the 30s. To be pre precise, August 3rd to the 5th, 1933. It was taken in Victoria, BC, and it shows an annual convention of uh, Canadian League Legion members. Uh, and it's the building in behind, got the Union Jacks. I believe this is our, our BC Parliament buildings. Correct me if, my, if I'm wrong, if you know what this building is. I want to get the picture and then really slowly pan to the side because it's quite beautiful. Now, this is a convention, so there'll be lots of different um, entities and groups uh, depicted here. On this side, you can see a fellow right here that is in kilt, 
and some ladies who have um, looks like the kilts behind them. So I believe that these ladies are associated with the fellows in the kilt. Then we move to the middle here, and it just goes all the way up the steps, including a young fellow, a young boy up here. And then we get into some important looking people here, this fellow in full regalia. And in the middle, it says Canadian Legion, B-E-S-L, U.S. Post number 17, Portland, Oregon, Pipe Band. So I believe that this here is associated with the uh, fellows with their um, bagpipes. And um, they probably were attendees at these conventions and possibly had some um, aspect of importance. There are a lot of people. It goes all the way up to the very back here. And uh, they all look very much uh, part of their time, both in clothing, attire, and hairstyles, and hats. And it's really interesting to see this. Now what gets more interesting is when you come to this section here, and it actually gives the information uh, about the annual convention, Canadian Legion, B-E-S-L, I don't know what that means, uh, August 3rd to 5th, 1933, Victoria, B.C. So I do strongly believe that these are our Parliament buildings. Um, if anybody knows for sure, I'm almost certain. It's just a really beautiful, long photo. Now what I'm going to do is very carefully turn this over. And you can see that it's been taped on the back and this tape has deteriorated to the point of ridiculousness. It's like hard, there's no stick -em. So I'm gonna to have to get some um, mounting tape for photographs and, and uh, artworks and correct that. It's gone a very spindly long wire and it has absolutely no information on the back. Okay, now the last item I have to show here is uh, something I'm absolutely tickled pink by. And I'm going to try and hold it as still as I can. I have very uncertain hands. Now this one is really neat because it looks to me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong again, that this is a troop of uh, soldiers, World War I. They are dressed to me in the correct attire. I believe this is a Canadian troop because they have what appears to be maple leaves on their caps and again they have a drummer at the front with their dog and most of them have rifles with bayonets at the ready so this is some sort of regimental photograph it's absolutely amazing now this estate group we got for forty dollars and the bulk of this came from the photos the first photo i showed you was 10 this one was 10 I think they were a bargain. I love old photos like this with the almost brownish tinge to it. And I think they're part of our past that we often forget. Now, what really astounds me is, I don't know if you can see this chap here. He looks like he's a teenager. And then there's a chap here. I'll move him a little closer. I don't know if you can, how clearly you can see on the camera. But that chap there also looks to be a teenager. They are very, very young. I'll back it up a bit in case it's uh, move this a bit in case it's not too clear. Again, this fellow here looks like a teenager, and this fellow here looks like a teenager. The rest appear to be more mature, mind you. As I say that, I look at this fellow here, and he looks very, very young. But the rest look to be in their twenties, mid to late twenties. A few older men. And of course, there's no telling how old the dog is. He, in his dog ears or otherwise, but this is a spectacular photo. Now, again, it doesn't say on the, anything on the front. It's obviously a studio picture, but I'm, again, I'm going to turn it over very carefully and see what we can find out on the back. Oftentimes, there's a lot of information on the back of these. And up here in uh, felt, black felt, it says L.H. Bellafontaine, Bellafortaine, I'm not sure. It's very poorly spelled, B-E-L-L-E-F-O-R-I-T, something or other, Bella Forti, I'm not sure, and then the size of it, and you can see that this is on the back of an actual, appears to me to be, I don't know if you can see this clearly, there's incising here along the edge, right to here, so it looks to be the back of a photograph or an album cover, and this is old. There's lots of age on the back of the wood, lots of, of signs of age in the 
little nails. And at one point, let me turn this the other way here. There was something right up here, but whatever it was is long gone. Okay, I'm gonna put it down carefully. And reflect my camera back on it. Uh, pardon the light glare, that's just part of the fact that there's skylights above me. So I feel that we did well. Let me know how you feel. Do you collect these kind of things? Uh, I like this because I do collect stamps. I like World War I, and I'm hoping this is World War I. It looks like it to me. Let me know if you think otherwise. Um, but I do believe this to be, and I like that. We've got collections of World War I troopers, letters, that kind of thing. And I'm very pleased with the canning jars to add to my collection. And I know this is a Canadian made canning jar and with my can, and of course with the phone and the lighter. So this was a nice little uh, lot. There's, when you count it all, I won't put that too close, with the spoons, there's four spoons. So let's count the spoons as one. So the other picture is one, the phone is two, the lighter is three, four, five, six, seven, eight items for $40 which if I do my math correctly is $5 a piece if you average it out. So this was our find today from um, our local estate sale. Uh, I go out with my husband every Saturday and when we do make good finds, I will start to post them as a uh, second posting each week on my uh, YouTube channel. I will continue to do stamps once a week religiously and I will also add things like this and, and information about collectibles. So I'm hoping you enjoy these. Uh, let me know how you feel about a little bit of a diversity. Anyways, I hope all is going well for everybody and you're safe and sound and happy and with those you love. Stamp Sleuth, signing off.